Welcome to Writers Web TV, a world first and a completely new concept in online learning for creative writers. Today we'll be finding the magic in writing for children, whether the magic for you is finishing your book or literal magic. Here we're going to give you the tools you need to write successful children's fiction. Today you'll be learning tips and technique from some of the world's top authors, but just like many of you, they all start as unpublished writers, so they understand the problems new writers face and are with us today to share their, to share their experience to give you an inspirational boost, but also to show you how you can improve your writing to make it the best that it can be. You'll hear some things today that you know you're doing already, but you'll also hear tips that can help crystallise the areas that you're unsure about. With our author's help, you'll discover completely new ways of looking at things that will help move your writing to the next level. My name's Vanessa O'Loughlin, and we're coming to you from Ireland, a country that has no less than four Nobel laureates for literature and four Booker Prize winners, and we hope this year there might be a fifth. Today we're in the heart of Dublin City, a UNESCO city of literature, and I'm sure I don't need to tell you that the Irish are great storytellers. The world of children's books has experienced huge growth in the last 10 years. Countless articles have analysed the booming success of now iconic series like Harry Potter, Twilight and The Hunger Games. And readers and publishers are clamouring for more. Today we'll be covering vital points, tips and techniques that you need to understand to successfully write for children. We're going to help you understand how the industry works and the way that your book can grow from the page and onto the screen. Have your notebook ready, but remember that you can download this workshop and watch it again after we've gone, so there's no need to worry if you miss something. Starting with picture books and going through young adults to cover fantasy and science fiction, whatever the age group you're writing for, you'll get information from each of our guests, so stay with us for as long as you can. Our first guests are already here, and I'll be introducing them in a minute, but first we're going to meet our audience and find out a little about them and their writing. Just like you, our viewers, they're all aspiring writers, and they'll be working through the exercises we run through today with you at home, so you can see exactly what we mean as we explain the crucial techniques that you need to master to get your book written to a commercial standard. We've Claire looking after our social media today and ready to pass on your thoughts and comments and questions. So Claire, how do the viewers get in touch with us? Well, Vanessa, you can get in touch via Twitter by putting at Writers Web TV, or you can put hashtag Writers Web TV after your comment. You can also get in touch via Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Writers Web TV, or you can email us at info at Writers Web TV dot com. That should get us. That's great. So there's loads of ways of getting in touch with us, and we want to hear from you because your, your involvement in this show makes a huge difference. So let's see who our audience members are. Aideen, perhaps you'd like to introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about you. Yes, certainly. My name's Aideen Fiel, and I'm a mother of three. And um, when I had my third child two and a half years ago, in between the night feeds, a story formed in my head. And in between screaming at my children, making meals and ironing, I managed to jot down a few notes. And so I'm down to my last 20,000 words. And um, yeah, I'm just hoping to, to absorb as much information today. That's fantastic, because we'll have an awful lot of people watching who are mothers, who are fitting it in around their, you know, all their daily life. So how do you, how do, how do you fit in writing yourself? Do you have a writing time each day? Or? I, well, I didn't beforehand. Um, it was mainly at night, just through exhaustion. And now my youngest has gone to school. He's just started preschool. So morning times I just dedicate nine to one. No one talked to me. Right. Excellent. I think that's the way to go, isn't it? And one of the things we'll find today is that writing every day and building up that pattern of writing is just so important. And I'm sure that our authors are going to agree with us now. So that's fantastic. And Michelle, tell us a little bit about you. Um, well, I'm a newish primary school teacher and um, I left the financial world for teaching. And just being around kids so often, and they're so cheeky and outrageous. Um, I remember what it was like to be young, and all of a sudden I remembered a, a promise that I made myself that I was going to write a book when I was older. So I just got into it, and I came across writing.ie's the first website, and I did a course actually through ink, Inkwell Treatments, and it was just fantastic. I loved it. I kept doing it, go to conferences, and I set up a little blog then, and I just do reviews. and. So it's great, and I'm working on a YA book now at the moment. Grand. And it's going, okay, it's just hard kind of getting the time to sit down and write. Often I just think about writing and I think about the story. But my sister is um, a, uh, an art psychotherapist, and she said that's the ego. And you shouldn't, when you're not writing, you shouldn't think about writing or talk about writing, because you're feeding into the ego, and you should just sit down and just action. It's all about the verb and mm. not the noun. 
Mm. I don't know if our writers will agree with that because there's a huge amount of percolation <laughs> and creative time that you need to I be thinking about the whole time. Don't so worry. She's in her psychotherapy world. Yeah. We're in the writing world. So <laughs> yeah. that's great. Lovely. Sorry, Adrian, I didn't ask what age group your book's for. It's for young adults, so young they're adults all 16, 17. Years. Excellent. Cool. That's great. And Joe, tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, I'm just, I've always wanted to write. So I'm just fulfilling what seems like a natural course. Um, yeah, I've written a um, kids' adventure book. Uh, Barney Bruce from the Sons of Shambhala, which I think I'd sent you part of and received some encouragement from you on that, Vanessa. I've also written uh, a version of the Teddy Bear's Picnic, uh, the true story of what actually happened, and a variation on the Santa theme, which I'm kind of keeping under wraps. It's kind of a twist at the end. And... Um, yeah, I'm currently writing uh, a web series with Ferdy McGanna. Mm, that's quite exciting, He's isn't it? Grizz yeah. living Irishman since Rocky De Valera. He is. <laughs> very, very cool guy. For anybody yeah. who doesn't know, Ferdy McGanna is um, a guy who uh, wrote a best-selling novel mm. called uh, The Last of the High Kings, and it was made mm. into a movie like with Gabriel Byrne. And you're working on a, on a it's a web TV series, isn't it? It is, but hopefully it'll be it'll go TV. further. Yeah. yeah, excellent, cool. That's great, <laughs> lovely. Yeah. And Shem, tell us about you. Um, yeah, well, I'm originally just from outside of London, moved over here. Um, I freelance copyright, but I've been writing, well, attempting to write for years, and at the minute I'm trying to collaborate with my dad, a lot of stories from the Caribbean, where my parents are from, um, and massive emphasis over there about the great oral tradition mm. and storytelling and a lot of scary stories like um, about ghosts and stuff, so that's what I'm trying to do at the moment, to try okay. to come up with like kids' versions of old school scary stories from the Caribbean. Excellent. I think that oral tradition is very important too and obviously yeah. that's something in Ireland is a very, very, the Shanky would be, would be a very, very important part of the Irish sort of history and yeah, so that's fantastic. So you've got some great stuff to draw on there. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah brilliant. And is your dad based here in London or is he in Dublin? Oh, uh, he's um, back home, yeah, okay, so in London, yeah. Working long distance. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic. And you blog too, don't you, Shem? Yeah, I do a bit of blogging here and there, just my own personal brain nonsense sometimes but yeah it's good I think blogging is a really good way Michelle's mentioned a blog too that it's a really good way for you to be able to write constantly and just keep moving because I think that's one of the things about writing and one of the things we're going to learn today is that um, keeping going and moving all the time and keeping writing as soon as you stop then you start to lose touch with whatever it is you're doing and, and that can be a big problem so yeah. fantastic and Tara tell us a little bit about you um, well I work for a women's magazine so the keeping writing during the day bit isn't a problem it's trying to find the motivation at night time to sit down in front of the computer screen again is certainly proving a problem this year. It was a lot better last year. I've been writing a young adult piece for about two years now, so I was very disciplined when I first started, two hours in the evening. Um, but now it's, it's finding the time to go back and to stick with it. Okay. I was writing it in secret, so I'm kind of outing myself here a little bit. <laughs> it's but, all uh, coming out now. Yeah. Great. And have you got a title? I'm going to go back now and ask you about your titles now a second. It was The Remembering Girl, but okay. that's... It's a work in progress. I like that. It's so a good see. one. Cool. Yeah. And again, it's yeah. sorry, young adult as well. It's young adult. Um, I think it's such a fantastic genre that didn't really exist when I was that age. Yeah. So I suppose that's why I'm slightly fascinated with it. That they're just so lucky. They have this fantastic range of books, purely for their age. I'm very jealous. Mm. Excellent. Yeah, and I think there's something I mentioned at the start, but that whole growth of young adult and yeah. um, the, the, the whole area um, is, you know, it's really exploding children's literature. I think, and it's great because it reflects then on the whole picture book market as well, and it and it really, you know, gets everybody going, doesn't it? Mm. And your, I think your books are more picture books, aren't they? Some your your for earlier writers, the the one about the teddy bears. Yeah, two of them are picture books, mm. and uh, the Barney Bruce and the Snows of Shambhala is a hundred thousand words so it needs a bit of pruning yeah, to say the yeah, least yeah but no it's still it's a good it's in good shape yeah it's in good shape and the so we want to hear what your blogs are we need to hit, find out what your blogs are so people can log in at home if they want to see so michelle tell us what your blog is uh, it's uh, teacher maloney king.com dot com cool and shem um, my mouth open story jump out dot com. Excellent. I think that's, that's a, you can see a link between the writing and the work. <laughs> that's oh, yeah. brilliant. Lovely. Well, now, Aiden, how old are your kids? Sorry, never asked. Um, eight, five, and two and a half. Two and a half. So you've got work cut out for you. Yeah, yeah. busy. Juggling everything. Has anybody else got kids? Yeah. Joe. Uh, 11 and three. Grand, great. And do you find the whole, uh, do you read stories to your children? Do you find that so useful? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah I, think that's, I think it's very important. One of the things we're going to be talking about with Mary Liz and Michael in just a second is that, um, that whole thing about reading and rhythm and, you know, reading out loud to children and really getting a sense of, uh, of, the, um, mm. of, the, of the story. So. Mm. Excellent. Well, thank you very much indeed. 